Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, so as you as you know, this is my April Fools video. Uh, my last video was my top ten movies of all time. So now I'm doing my top ten albums of all time. Um, now, in order for it to, uh, an album to be on this list, I have to like every single song that's on. It's if I can listen to it from beginning to end, then it's on this list. Um, you know, not everything out there. You know, a lot of there's some incredible albums out there, but you know, there's always like maybe two, three songs that just fill it and they suck, and usually I don't feel it. But every single album on this list, I I believe has incredible songs from beginning to end. Now, we are one, two, three, four, five. Five of these albums are actually old school hip hop albums. I don't listen to uh, hip hop as much as I used to. Um, I mean, I feel like it was more of a phase. Growing up here in New York, hip hop was huge, especially back in the late '80s, early '90s. Um, it was popular in my neighborhood. I grew up with it. Uh, you know, I still love it to this day, but I don't listen to it as much anymore. I guess it was more of a phase. But I still find these albums to be classics, and I will still listen to them from beginning to end. So I'm gonna go right into it. Uh, number ten is Nas's first album, Illmatic. So. If anybody knows uh, Nas, he is a uh, he's still around today. I don't find his new stuff to be as good anymore, but again, that's just me. But his first album is a classic. It's about nine songs on there, and every single one just freaking smacks. The production on it is just amazing. Um, it's got that gritty New York feel to it. You know, growing up in the early '90s, New York was uh, not the best, but you know, you get that feeling when you listen to that album it's just uh, an incredible album and again if you're a hip-hop fan i don't know if anybody else watching would like it but I still think you should check it out so number 10 is nas Ilmatic from 1994 damn i feel old number nine is another hip-hop album from 1992 and it's from my actually my favorite producer of all time uh, my favorite hip-hop producer let me uh I'll just fix that it's P. Rock and C.O. Smooth's Mecca and the Soul Brother. Um, so, P. Rock is known as used for using an SP-1200 uh, drum machine. I own one myself when I was producing back in the day. It is a pain in the ass to use. And when you use one of those things and you listen to this album, it's just mind-blowing how he made these songs, these beats on that thing. Just, you know, that using that 10-second sampling time that you have to grab all the samples you want go from different records speed them up slow them down in the machine it takes you like two three hours to make a freaking beat but every single song on here is just amazing um and it shows through the production as well and you know co smooth has is a great lyricist and you appreciate more when someone could get their message through without having to say one curse word i know i sound like an old fart saying that but it's straight it, I think it's an underrated album, uh, and I still think it's one of the greatest albums ever made. Uh, if people heard the song Troy, it is a classic. But yeah, that is my number nine, Pete Rock and C.L. Smooth's Mecca and the Soul Brother from 1992. Number eight, uh, I, this is a group that I really love, and I, a member just recently passed away not too long ago. It's a shame because I was looking forward to what they were going to be doing in the future. They were still dropping songs. Uh, this is a hip hop album from 1989. This is De La Soul's Three Feet High and Rising. Now, when these guys came out, they were considered, uh, I guess you could say hippies, and people were like dissing them and stuff. But if you listen to the album itself, it's just a sick album. Like every again, every single song, it's just got a, a feel like it's just feel good music to me, you know. Um, and that's, that's again, their first album is still their best one. They got a little harder as they went on later on. Uh, later on, their last album was really good too. It was a Kickstarter, but still, the original is still the classic. Uh, that is De La Soul's Three Feet High and Rising from 1989. Number seven is A Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauder. Mem uh, Midnight Marauders from 1993. Uh, so, A Tribe Called Quest was one of my favorite albums, and you know. What I liked about him is that you have Q-Tip and, you know, Five Dog, you know, who's passed away about six years ago. Um, but, you know, Q-Tip had this, like, this smooth way of, uh, of talking. And then you had Five Dog, who was just, you know, had this, I was this high energy. And just, they just meshed so well together. And, you know, Midnight Marauders was their third album. And, uh, 
It is one of their best albums, one of the best hip hop albums ever. And uh, it's again, every single beat on there is just sick. Every single song rocks. Um, but my number six is their second album, which is I think is their best and one of the best hip hop albums out there. And it is the last hip hop album on this list. And that is a Tribe Called Quest's Low End Theory from 1991. So this is, I guess you could call it jazz hip hop. And again, it's got a mixture of uh, different samples in there, but it's mostly jazz. And it just, every song just clicks so freaking well on there. You know, it's, it is one of my favorite albums of all time. I haven't listened to it in a while, but I think I got to start listening again. Um, but yeah, Tribe, if you have never heard of a Tribe Called Quest, just give them a listen there. Really, really good. Uh, especially those two albums I was saying, Midnight Marauders and Low and Theory. Uh, so yeah, my number six is, uh, a Tribe Called Quest Low End Theory from 1991. So number five is an album from 1979, and that is Michael Jackson's Off The Wall. Now, Thriller is not on this list because I do find Thriller to be a great album. It's probably in my top 20, but the popularity of Thriller would not have been without Off The Wall. I Off The Wall was just so amazing that I think because it was so good, that's why Thriller had the success it had. And just for me personally, I find Off The Wall to be a little bit better. Again, Quincy Jones, I think, is one of my favorite producers of all times. He really changed the way, you know, he pretty much made Michael Jackson a superstar. I mean, he was still, Michael Jackson still had some awesome soul albums before Off The Wall. But this, you know, this is the one that changed everything for him. Uh, again, yeah, that is my number five. Michael Jackson's Off The Wall, 1979. So, number four... I don't think much people here are going to know about it. Um, it is actually a soundtrack by Curtis Mayfield for a movie, which I think you all should check out. Uh, it didn't make my top 10 list. It's probably my top 20. So it's from 1978. This is the soundtrack to Short Eyes, the movie, uh, from by Curtis Mayfield. So this was the last, some people say it's the last uh, funk album by Curtis Mayfield. But it's got a big mixture of funk and uh, R&B soul. It's just an underrated album. I, I I remember I picked it up. I found it in a record store years ago, and picked it up. And I, I just listened to the whole thing, and I, I just loved it. And I can still listen to the whole thing to this day. Um, really, really. Un I said it before. It's, it's underrated. But if you're a fan of Curtis Mayfield, if you like that old that '70s funk, '70s R&B soul, highly recommend you check that album out and check out the movie short eyes it's not for the faint of heart um i'm not gonna go much into it but definitely uh check it out uh that's the short eyes soundtrack by curtis mayfield from 1978 my number three so this movie was on my top 10 well i said it was my top my number 10 but i made i, I think rocky's more my number 10 uh this is that movie actually my number 11 but the soundtrack is amazing and that is saturday night fever uh Every produced by the Bee Gees, it was probably it's probably the best soundtrack ever made. Um, again, every single song, even even the the disco songs with just the instrumentals are just oh, they're just amazing. It's popular here in New York, you know, especially back in the day and to this day, you still hear people rocking it. Um, but yeah, it's just an incredible. Our Bee Gees are amazing, you know. I've been a fan of them since as long as I can remember. Um, and this soundtrack is the, the greatest soundtrack ever made, in my opinion. Um, that is number three, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack from 1977. Now, number two is an urban folk album from 1972. And that is Jim Croce's You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Uh, I've always liked Jim Croce a lot. I feel like his music resonates with me. Um, but You Don't Mess Around With Jim is just a great freaking album. I think it's underrated as well i think it should get more attention than i feel like it doesn't get enough attention i think jim croce as an artist doesn't get enough you know he passed away in a plane crash in 1973 it was very it was sad unfortunate um because just a talented musician but i think his best album was you don't mess around with jim and it's one that i think you guys should check out uh my favorite song off that album is actually box number 10 but yeah, that's uh, number two, Jim Croce's You Don't Mess Around With Jim from 1972 or 71, one or the other. My number one of all time is from 1977, and this is a 
I guess you could have told an alternative rock album. Uh, that is Steely Dan's Aja. So Steely Dan is known for being meticulous in the studio. Uh, artists hate working with them because of how much of a pain in the ass that they can be. But it's all out of love and uh, artistry. And you can really see it here through this album, how incredible it is. Every single track is just amazing. And like you got your seven or eight minute songs, uh, Black Cow. For, again, people who are hip-hop fans will probably know the hook to that song. Uh, it's been sampled before. Um, Peg was sampled by De La Soul. Um, you have artists like Michael McDonald that appear on that album. Uh, you know, before, and I believe it was before Michael McDonald was even with the Doobie Brothers. But yes, Steely Dan Audra is my favorite album of all time. I have it on vinyl. It, I, che I will cherish that album for the rest of my life. It is that amazing. It is one that I think you guys should check out. That is my number one, Steely Dan Aja from 1977. So, yeah, that's going to do it. My top 10 albums of all time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to share in the comments your own personal favorite albums. Uh, be free to answer them as well. But, yeah, that's going to do it. Have a great one, guys. I hope you have a great uh, April Fool's Day. Until next time.